All right. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, depending where you are, uh, LinkedIn family. So, hey, I've got Marcus Girolamo with us. He is the vice president of marketing for Organogenesis today. He's been in the medical business for over 21 years. So he, he's been sales, marketing, but Marcus, I'm not going to steal your thunder. Give us a little background about you. Thanks, Joe. And uh, good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, again, my name is Marcus Girolamo. I've been in healthcare since about 1996, so almost 25 years now. Uh, I actually started in sales, started in the operating room. Uh, from there, I moved on to J&J, &J, actually in the sales role for a number of years and got the opportunity with them to actually move into global marketing. Uh, then from there, I was actually recruited to a company called HealthPoint. This is where I ended up in the wound care space. I was there from about 2006 up until the acquisition of Smith & Nephew. I stayed on with Smith & Nephew for about two years after that. Um, had the opportunity to actually get up on the healthcare services side of the business with a company called DaVita in the dialysis space, I'm sure many people are familiar with, where I ran commercial operations for their specialty pharmacy. So sales, marketing, government affairs, and payer development. And then a little over a year ago, had the opportunity to join up with, uh, with Organogenesis and reenter the wound care space and have been really happy to be here, uh, really enjoying my time. You know, the one thing I will say is with you know, my experience, I've had the kind of fortune and opportunity to work with a lot of incredible folks that uh, really impacted and dramatically impacted my career. And so I've been very fortunate and uh, I've gotten to really uh, meet and work with some pretty cool people along the way. Very cool. Very cool. So, yeah, no, I mean, I love love your background. I mean, you've done the sales, you've done marketing, you got market access, you've been on the clinical side. It gives you that great, round, well-rounded perspective that you can put yourself in other people's shoes. No question about it. Uh, so I have a couple questions for you. You know, uh, from that perspective and changing, it, the world is changing, as we know, COVID. But you and I talked ahead of this. There are some fundamentals that you can't abandon. Can you share your insight on what, you know, in this changing time, what you shouldn't abandon? Absolutely. You know, in the 25 years I've been in the space, there's been a lot of seminal events. Uh, if, you, if you look at it, I actually went to school before there was the Internet. Right. And so we had the introduction yeah. of the Internet. Uh, we've had Internet 2.0. I don't get that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not keeping up pace with that. So I don't That's know. Great. My kids always find that it's funny when I tell them I was in school before the internet existed. They don't believe me. But anyway, yeah. uh, you know, we had the internet 2.0 where the content really developed and the rich content really showed up. Social media, social networking. We've been through financial crisis, 9-11, and now this COVID crisis. And I can tell you, you know, as we talked about earlier, the one thing that is really clear is fundamentals are still fundamentals. Good positioning, good kind of omni-channel, multi-channel uh, messaging really strong marketing fundamentals have played through all of those different events. And, you know, I will tell you, especially in medical device, that relationship with your sales team is so very important, right? Because in the end, if you look at it from a channel perspective, they're your number one most effective channel. They happen to be your number one most expensive channel. So you have to make it work. And I, and I have to tell you, I think we were laughing earlier, the number of times I've heard the new normal, I mean, at, at all these different events and, uh, the new normal is going to come in. No longer will the old sales and marketing models work going forward. There's going to be dramatic changes. I mean, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that, uh, I'd be retired at this point. But I, I can tell you, fundamentals still remain. Constant communication with your sales team, keeping them engaged, keeping them engaged with their customer, giving them opportunities to engage their customer is really, really big. And, uh, you know, I view marketing as really a, a, it's, it's a strategist type of role but you're really a connector within your organization, right? You're bringing the disparate pieces together and that's fundamental to the success, I think, of a good commercial business. And so uh, anyway, I feel like, you know, uh, as these events have happened, many marketers have lost their way. They've gotten wrapped up in social media. They've gotten wrapped up in how cool uh, the opportunity is to communicate in the internet. And they've lost the positioning or the messaging of their products. And, and that's, I think, you know, this is another opportunity where things will change, but fundamentals will still remain. That's a that's a great lesson. I mean, sometimes you get chasing that new shiny object and you yeah. forget that core, that center of where you are. And I love that term of being a connector. You know, as marketing yeah. is truly the connector within the organization from R&D to sales to, you know, voice a customer. It's just it's really a succinct way to put it. Now, you have to admit uh, there will be some changes. Right. So this is no, no. even in all those seminal events, there are some changes. 
So how will marketing change as a result of COVID? Well, you know, first thing is it's still developing, right? I mean, we're, we're still in the midst of this crisis. And so I don't know that we know all the necessary insights of how things will change. Uh, I don't know that there will be just these about faces or 180 degree changes as much as there will be the speed or the rate of change that's already happening will, will accelerate. Um, and so, you know, things I think about, there's three things that really top of mind for me. Flexibility of strategy and content. If you think about the pandemic, it's, it's, it's global in nature, but the practical implication is it's actually local, right? So what was happening in New York early when uh, it hit the shores of the U.S., was not necessarily what was happening in Texas, for instance. And so the flexibility of your strategy, the flexibility of your content to be able to support a number of different situations is huge. Uh, I think when you look at your marketing mix, this was probably a good, this was a good check to make sure you had the right marketing mix and you were communicating through the right channels. I think, you know, access to clinicians, access to institutions, has been something that's been under fire for a number of years. This is probably gonna accelerate a little bit of that no access policy. And so you really have to think about your marketing mix and the channels you're using to communicate. I'm still a firm believer, if you and your sales team as marketers can add value, you're gonna be invited into those, those situations and the things we can do there. Um, analytics and data, look, that's always been huge. It's been a growing area. Uh, but I think that that's becoming even more important as you see access decrease, the ability to segment your customers and truly understand what's going on and focusing on those who you think are going to be most important to your brand is going to be huge. Uh, from the data perspective, look, we're in the business of selling outcomes, right? That's our, that's our job in healthcare. And so the ability to speak to patients, the ability to speak to the ideal patient that's going to potentially respond to your product versus maybe a different therapeutic um, is important. And so all those things, I think were, those were changes that were already afoot in the business and in the industry. I think it's just going to accelerate what's happening there. Yeah. So I, I, that's a great point. I mean, I've heard that pandemics don't start change. They accelerate the change Absolutely. that's already occurring. And I, I think your point is if you're already had that mix and that reach and going after those and seeing those changes, you just were able to accelerate along, right along with that. It's a great point. I think uh, some some uh, key elements there. Uh, you know, with that, what new tools or mindsets or maybe resources have you had to, you know, bring more in as that change has accelerated? Yeah, I think you know, from the mindset perspective, you know, resiliency and adaptability those have always been important. But you know, I think these to your point, the pandemic shines a brighter light on that. Again, we're in the yeah. space of healthcare. It's it's a dynamic business to begin with. You know, CMS has been pushing again in the right later in the idea of change. CMS has been pushing us down this path of trying to get the cost of care, the care and the lowest cost side of care. So they, you know, this is happening across a lot of different specialties. So they're trying to move, you know, move things out of the hospital into step down into the outpatient, outpatient office, office to home, so on and so forth. And so you really got to be adaptable. And, and, and like I said, I think, you know, resiliency is huge in my mind because, you know, every day is a little bit different and some days you get a gut punch and some days you don't, and you got to be able to yeah. respond, you know, from the tool perspective, there's a lot of cool development going on. I think, you know, the virtual engagement business is booming. Um, I've, we've looked at a lot of cool stuff to, to engage customers and to make that virtual engagement a little more dynamic. And we're, we're experimenting with a lot of stuff. Um, but the trick is kind of coming back to the fundamentals. How do you use that new channel in the right way, but not necessarily lose sight of what you're trying to communicate, losing your message, losing the position. But uh, I suspect this will be a uh, this will be a point we will look back on and say, wow, this was the catalyst to create a lot of new engagement tools, maybe new communication channels, those types of things to augment your marketing mix. Cool. Great. Uh, that's that's some. Uh, very good points. And I know a lot of people are taking some notes on what are those things happening. But you know, overall, I mean, now we're looking at some you talked about, you know, what are the challenges that you if you look past this next turn that medical device companies will face? Yeah, I mean, look, I think we go back to what we already said, the fundamentals are the fundamentals and staying true to mm -hmm. that is going to make you is going to I think, again, it's going to carry you through this crisis, it's going to push you through. I think, you know, when you look at the other seminal events and you use that as a proxy as to what's going on, while they were different, they were very much the same in the sense of people expected a new normal. What we learned from that was um, 
that customers, consumers, healthcare, or just general consumers, mm -hmm. their memory is actually pretty short and things revert yeah. back to normal more quickly than I think people would anticipate. I do think some of the financial impacts, the economic impacts, or maybe some of those more lasting pieces that we have to pay particular attention to. And so as that relates to people insured, ability to pay out of pockets, those types of things are going to be things that are going to be challenging going forward. And maybe more of the lasting impact versus, you know, we're going to be virtual forever and we're never going to meet with face to face ever again, which I just don't think is going to be the case. I think you'll see the pendulum swing back a little bit. Obviously, the yeah. speed of change, um, to your point, we've made, I think, a couple of times, things were already in motion, the movement to site of care, the movement to no access, those things are in motion, that's going to speed up. But I think the one other thing I would say, and which I'm already experiencing, I don't know if you are, there is this, this kind of virtual fatigue. And as we've engaged, um, you know, I think that there was a lot of excitement and everybody kind of quickly moved to this virtual environment. But I think this is where some of that development is going to need to be because, you know, after being on the conference calls all day long and virtual calls all day long, you know, there is a level of virtual fatigue. And I think our customers are feeling that as well and consumers are feeling that. And so we're going to have to be really thoughtful about how we do things in an efficient and effective way to get our messages out there, but just don't, you know, wear people out uh, either. So it's a really interesting balance there. And I don't know that we've figured that out yet. Yeah, and, and I, I agree with you. I, I think there's going to be a bounce back. I mean, you're not going to take thousands of years of you know evolution where <laughs> we are, have human interaction and get rid of it all of a sudden. I mean, we are right. pack animals, you know, and we, we will come together. I mean, you've you've seen that when they've opened a restaurant close by. I mean, everyone flocks right. in even though they can, <laughs> right? So um, it, we've seen that. So those are some of the the challenges, and I agree with you in those accelerations. What's the what's the uh, what are the opportunity? Where would you say people? You know, they see the opportunities right now in that device. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is one of those opportunities, honestly, just to look in the mirror. I think that's the biggest opportunity I see. You know, again, kind of in the, in the mindset of back to the basics. How, uh, you know, are you able to deliver good messaging? Are you able to differentiate your products? You know, what is your overall go to market strategy look like? You know, it's it's easy, I think, when when things we're kind of in the normal state prior to COVID to get trapped into using kind of the same tactics and channels over and over and over, which as I think we would all argue is probably not the most effective way to, to, to market your product. And so this is an opportunity to tap the brakes and kind of reevaluate things. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think you have to ask yourself, how, how is my business? How is my brand performing right now during the crisis? How well is it rebounding? Why is that happening? And most important, you know, it's probably a good estimate and understanding of what level of equity you have, brand equity you have in the market. And so, yeah. you know, based on that, it's an opportunity to assess, and maybe improve what's already going well, or maybe, you know, about face and say, uh, maybe we don't necessarily have great brand equity. So I think it is, I mean, for me, it's been an opportunity for reflection. It's been an opportunity to kind of get to, unfortunately, look at your business in a different light, which has been helpful. It's been insightful. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure like everybody, it's an, an anxiety provoking and, you know, keeps you up at night. But at the same time, I think uh, it's given you the opportunity for a, kind of a different viewpoint. But uh, yeah. all in all, I think if, if we take the opportunity, I think as things return to normal, we're going to be in a better place. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. I mean, you don't have that trade show coming in two days, that sales meeting, <laughs> that that uh, that KOL coming to visit, all those things convergent. Those aren't happening. So you have that breathing room to look at back at those fundamentals and are you really on message? Are you really bringing value? I think that's, that's an excellent opportunity. And those that take advantage of it, I think, I think you're right. You know, will, will their brand equity will rise as a result, you know, through this. That's, that's an excellent Yeah, I think point. you, you, you could literally see a bump on the backside. I think we expect a rebound, but you know, I think you can get a, you know, an exponential bump on top of that if you do the right things now while you have the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, disruption usually creates opportunity, right? So, uh, Absolutely. I mean, you know, Machiavelli do not, uh, let the, uh, opportunity for go, good crisis go to waste. I think I totally botched that's it, true. but that's the basic <laughs> idea, right? So, Absolutely. Uh, hey, I would, I'd like to take a chance, uh, some questions from the uh, floodgate family here. I think some people have been putting it into, um, some of the chat, uh, you know, windows here, see if we've got any additional questions we have. Um, hey, one that's kind of just a simple tactical one that came up is what platform, you know, all this technology, there's so many out there, right? I think someone right. wants an inside track of which one you guys are using and liking and what's having the most impact for your clinical customers. 
I mean, from a virtual, I mean, we're literally using everything, just to be frank. Um, we've, we've used the, the go-to webinars, we've used Zoom, we've used uh, Teams, um, and probably everything in between. I, I will tell you, depending upon the environment, uh, I think we've, just to be frank, I think Zoom has worked best for clinicians. I think internally, we, we run off of uh, Microsoft, so uh, Teams has been fantastic for collaboration internally. Um, you know, we're using a lot of other technology that uh, probably not as name brand as those as far as just virtual ways to communicate and, and get information out to clinicians, customers, some that's proprietary virtual to us, uh, and then some other partners we've been working with. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. We're literally, we've been experimenting with just about everything. Yeah, so you got to do find out what's working. I think that's where the questions are coming from, right? So question for you, how do you, um, you know, look for what qualities do you look for when, you know, hiring a good marketeer? This one's a little close to my heart. So uh, yeah, um, there's a lot of things I, I look for. Obviously, you look for someone who's passionate about what they do, right? I think that, you know, I've always said the kind of trifecta of a good job is if you have the right level of passion, you can work with the right people, and you can add value in that organization. And so Conversely, when we're looking to hire people, I'm looking for someone who's passionate, who's someone that I think will be a good cultural fit for our team and someone who can truly add value. Um, beyond that, we're looking for folks that have a lot of intellectual curiosity that are willing to kind of cha challenge the status quo, ask the tough questions, really push the boundaries because that's where breakthrough thinking comes through, right? If we, if we just hire a bunch of folks that think and look like us, unfortunately, right. yeah. you just don't end up in a in a spot where you know, five years from now you're doing the same thing. And I think as we've all proven, you know, you just can't do the same thing over and over and expect different results. So you've got to challenge the norm. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Uh, looks like last question. You, you mentioned that collaboration being that yeah. connection yeah. with marketing, you know, with sales, how do you, you know, what, what have you done to create that, that connection, that respect with sales? What are the great activities you'd recommend? Um, I mean, honestly, it's just being there. I think that's the biggest thing. We just have to show up, I think, number one. Um, I think giving any opportunity to collaborate, to have a combination of uh, cross-functional meetings, include them in the strategy development, the tactical development. Um, I try to encourage our team to be an open book, as transparent as possible, so they feel like they're true partners that are in their camp uh, supporting them beyond all the other stuff that we're doing. Yeah, great. Um, last question here, you know, is a digital mar digital marketing, right? We mentioned, you know, core and message, but the new medium of reaching people through social or especially clinicians. What what do you find resonate? What works? Where where are you maybe spending your ad dollars if you are? Yeah, I mean, uh, so we're spending across a myriad of stuff. So I mean, probably some of that is stuff I can't mention here uh, live on the air. But uh, uh, what, I, what I will say is this is where the cross of analytics and digital is so important. Um, I, I am I, I prefer not to go out and fish for opportunities. I prefer to go out and hunt. I guess would be the analogy that I would use. So ultimately, yeah. using data to narrow the competitor, excuse me, the customer set to where we can go out and put messages on target where we know we have opportunity uh, has been probably our most effective digital approach. So not a one size fits all, but being much more specific yes. with that data to carve it out. Carve it out. That makes makes total sense. I mean, if you, you you feed people what they're interested in, they're more likely to lean in, get to know your brand, et cetera. It's got good inbound marketing, right? You know, essentially. So. That's uh, right. And that's, I think, where you get the cross of, uh, of analytics, segmentation, good marketing fundamentals. Whether you're in a live, like, face-to-face -face channel or you're in a digital channel, it's all still the same. It's just a different yeah. medium. Yeah. yeah. Just knowing what matters to them and providing that value. It, it's, you know, we, we could add a lot that's of complicated exactly right. phrases, but sometimes it's simple. Right? <laughs> so. That's right. Good. Martin, hey, I do appreciate you spending the 20 minutes here with us. Um, I do think I was looking at the chat and some of the things we might have, as always, sometimes technology is awesome, but sometimes <laughs> it doesn't work as well as we hope. I think there's some people that didn't sure. get on here. So we apologize to people who didn't, but we will, it will be live on our website, our LinkedIn, and we'll send it out to everybody. Anybody that stuck their hand up, said they want to be a part of it uh, after this call. So apologize for that. But Marcus, thank you. And uh, we'll talk soon, sir. Thank you, Joe.